Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Snack Time with Chanel. I know it's been a long time, but we're going to be blasting some Akron, drinking some black coffee with my <sighs> Night's Watch vows, which now mean nothing thanks to Dan and Dave at HBO, who took George R. R. Martin's a Song of Ice and Fire book series and just ruined it. Like, you could have had legit, like, 13 seasons and have it not be boring if they just would have went into the Dornish plot and I don't want to spoil anything for people that haven't read the books. A lot of gnarly stuff was cut out from the TV show because it was too fantasy based. We wanted to make a show that football players, supermodels, and comic book readers can watch and enjoy. Fuck you. You're an, you two are the biggest hacks in Hollywood. And I know this video is like two years fucking late. Seriously, you ruined one of the best television shows since The Wire. Yeah. When it comes to HBO programming, as much as I love Silicon Valley, the first four seasons of Game of Thrones were great. And then you guys started hurting on book material. You were getting that Star Wars trilogy at the time, which you fucking lost because you couldn't get the landing when it came to finishing the series out properly. And that's not because George isn't finished writing. That's beef on my end. I've been waiting since 2011 to find out, like... Is Jon Snow going to come back as a... I don't want to spoil anything. So, you know what? Skip ahead a minute. If you haven't seen Game of Thrones or read A Dance with Dragons. Give me five seconds. One, two, three, four. Last chance. All right, so when Jon Snow gets stabbed in the book, his last word is ghost. And now in the books, the Stark children are very, they're all wargs. They're all connected to their dire wolves, except for Sansa, because Lady was killed in book one. But that is what it is and whatnot, like the, Stark children being all wargs would kind of take away from Bran being a warg. But they kind of set up that Rickon also has green dreams at the beginning when he says, I saw father down the crypts. It makes no fucking sense when you go back and watch it. Trust me, it's bullshit. There's a bunch of stuff that they set up in the pilot that they never explained. It was just like... Oh, that plot point? Like, who cares? Money, 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 money. And it's like, dude, speaking of money, I woke up today and my mom's aunt, she's 96 years old, 97, my bad, she just turned 97 too. Like, three weeks ago. She's on morphine kind of on her way out sadly she's my great aunt uh real cool lady uh i always just called her aunt jeanette but it's my mom's real aunt and they were real tight and my mom has both covid shots had covid and i still think it's a bad idea to say goodbye although they're allowing a compassion visit to me i'm all like Fuck, like, I don't have my COVID shots, like, I'm working on it, but, fuck, like, come on, don't bring any shit home, like, it already, it was so fucking hard, like, 
I don't even want to go into that shit, but like if you have someone in your house that has COVID, but you don't feel any fucking symptoms or anything like that, you still might probably have it. Like you, you should just go get tested, but you're better off just thinking, oh, I have it. Let me just keep my distance and keep my distance from everybody else and just quarantine for a few days and see how you feel and then get a fucking test, wear a mask, get vaccinated. But that doesn't mean that you don't need to wear your mask anymore, okay? Like, for real, don't throw these fuckers out. And when it comes to... And I'm not knocking on bunk dope here. I think, you know... At first, when I saw, like, record labels making masks, I was like, why are you guys trying to make money off of, uh, like, this? Like, I didn't realize it was going to become what it became. So at first, I remember being, like, kind of mad at a couple record labels. I thought they were using the pen, like... I thought they were using the situation for profit, but they were just trying to make cool masks because they had the hindsight to see this wasn't going away. But here's the problem with these types of masks. Number one, made in Honduras. So how's the quality on this? I don't really know, but look at how hard this fucker is to even get on. Like, you have to tuck back, and then, alright, I got it on first try, of course. But, like, there's these gaping holes right here, where no matter what, there's air getting through, like, 120%. So, you have to do this, and you might be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, look at how loose it is, look at that, see? It sucks. And it happens all the time. Like, you, I have to wear, like, a hat when I wear this mask. Or, see, like, look at how sketchy that is. Or I double up. I'll put this on. I want to actually get it to stay. See, look at this. It's fucking ridiculous. All right, there. And then second mask. I know this is a snack time video, but then I'll do this. Now I don't stress as much because I'm um, doubled up, but that's ridiculous. Like, you know, shouldn't have to do that, but if you're buying non medical masks, like I've ran into a few people that just have the bandanas, like, Dude, that stops nothing. Like, I, they, they, like, proved it with, like, the CDC. It's better than nothing, but you're still allowing, like, 65% of germs to get in. And today, though, my mom, before she went to see her aunt, she grabbed some Chick-fil-A. Now, I don't support Chick-fil-A or their beliefs or anything like that. So, first, let's get this off the bat. Everything about this company's politics is bullshit, except for giving their employees health insurance. That's awesome. For a fast food joint. But, we have these chicken biscuits. And I'm guessing it's kind of like chicken waffles. But look at how greasy <laughs> these are. It's like that Simpsons test where Homer, Homer's trying to get obese. And, like, when they try to wipe, like, if, uh... <laughs> the grease makes the napkin clear, it's okay to eat. Let's see how bad the grease is. Ah, uh, it's not bad. It just looks bad. I guess it's just a buttered bun. But let's try this. Chicken for breakfast? Or are you fucking weird? Mm. 
Mm. Yo. One of my mom's co-workers gave her a Chick-fil-A uh, gift card and she snagged these and yeah, these are fucking delicious. They're not like hot because they've been sitting around for a little bit, but they're very good. Again, hate Chick-fil-A's politics, but they make some good fucking chicken. And, you know, it's technically free, so. But, like, I scarfed that the fuck down. They're gonna give you four. But, it's pretty good. That would actually be really good with some orange juice. And I know that Chick-fil-A has simply orange, orange juice, which is... My personal favorite, pulp free, but black coffee, you can't go wrong. In my personal opinion, like, I'm just a big black coffee fan. I actually need a little bit more. Because I have one thing I really want to talk about here. Akron's sick, aren't they? It's a classic. Forget what year this is. I think it's a 92. Rights of the Black Mass. Oh, that was that's one thing about those. I just got gnarly heartburn. But that was delicious. But we have something to talk about besides Game of Thrones. And I would play a sample because I have a laptop hooked up over there. But I noticed yesterday because I brought it up, there were some comments that were like, you don't like the new Sangha Sugarbog record? All right, so let's get to this. I just wasn't feeling it. Sorry. Don't kill me. It wasn't my thing. I'd rather listen to internal bleeding or deeds of flesh, you know? That's just my take on it. Now, I really like pornographic seizures. It's a fun record. And I even called this out a year ago, like... I wasn't impressed by the new song they played live. I didn't even know it was a new song. And then I got hit by with a copyright strike because of it. So first off, fuck you, Century Media. You're assholes. That was the last live set I filmed before the world changed. And you took that away from me personally. Like, it's just... A bummer. Like, you're really that greedy, Century Media? Like, I don't make a penny off these videos. It's for everybody else, and you need, like, fuck you. Like, whoever did that, you're an asshole, for real. Like, how the hell did I, like, I legit didn't know that was a new song. It was a very muddy mix. Everything just blend, blended together. But the first time I saw them live was awesome just for real it was really fucking good but the second time i thought mourned st stole that fucking show but uh when it comes to the full length i just personally was underwhelmed i thought the production like cody works with a lot of bands so his style of production It's kind of, everything is very loud. No matter what band he's mixing, I feel in the mix, the vocals, drums are just super, super loud. And 
it makes it sound a lot heavier than it probably really is. But I just wasn't feeling the full length at all. Where if I throw on pornographic seizures, it's just like, okay, like four tracks, I'm in, I'm out, and you know, got some heavy tunes under my belt. Here, I feel like this is a death metal starter pack release, and there's nothing wrong with that. Especially if you want to get into the more brutal side of death metal. And I'm not calling the new Bog record super brutal, but like, I get what they were going for, but the drums ended up sounding like Metallica St. Anger, which I'm pretty sure was on purpose to try and get that, you know, slammy snare sound. But then I see them with that, you know, St. Anger shirt they made, and I'm like, do they actually like St. Anger? And, you know, who else is going to take elements of St. Anger by Metallica and put it into a death metal record? So maybe they were onto something and I'm just an old man and it went over my head. But I just found the songs boring, kind of generic. And I just wasn't feeling it. Like, especially, you know what? I'll get a copyright strike. Fuck it. This song just did absolutely nothing for me. And uh, speaking of Chick fil A, this song's called Dick fil A. Get it? Ha 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 ha. Now listen to this. And you'll see why I... I'll point out why I don't like this. First off, the drums already are getting on my nerves. Listen to that snare. And I... I, I Like, I'm a fan of Devin's vocals, too, but, like, here, I don't know, it's just... Like, that sounded like a pitch shifter. It's, it's just, it's death metal. It's just a little bit brutal. But like, that riff, it's not really going anywhere. It is what it is. If you like it, you like it. But I'm just not feeling it. So this is the closest you're going to get to a review. So, if you're new to death metal and stuff, you might be like, Oh, that's fucking brutal and heavy as fuck. Now, real quick. listen to that when I can listen to this. Internal bleeding. Right. See, like, that's already putting a smile on my face. Like, fuck yeah. Like their their snare doesn't sound overly like a tin can. 
but we'll take one more bite of the dick filet. But seriously, these are really good. But I don't support Chick-fil-A. But anyways, if you can get your hands on these for free, do it. Like, that's what I was thinking the new Bog record was going to sound like. But, you know, it is what it is. Everybody has different tastes and I just wasn't feeling it. And that's just me. You can like it. I don't care. It's your opinion. It's your life. And it's your life. It's not a fucking TV show. So, anyways, drink black coffee, listen to death metal, and, you know, eat some chicken biscuits. They don't need to be from Chick-fil-A, but now I know that chicken and... Biscuits works pretty fucking good. So, yeah. Thanks for watching this new episode of Snack Time with Schnell. As always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule.